Today, I'm gonna show you how to build a really cool looking particle explosion effect from any image you like using Apple Motion. Also, if you're a patron, you'll be able to download the project file right now and load in your own image for your own videos. Opening up Apple Motion, you should get the project browser. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. Now this project is going to be very, very computer intensive, so I highly suggest that you work at settings that are not going to absolutely tank performance on your computer. So today I'm going to be working at 1080p with a frame rate of 2997. I'm also going to leave my duration at 10 seconds. From there you can push open. The first thing we want to do is of course bring in our image. So go ahead and push command I and load the image in that you want to use. The first thing I want to do is actually animate our logo starting to melt. So let's jump on over into our generators and find the clouds generator. I'm just going to drag that into the Final Cut Pro group. Then I'm going to go ahead and disable the clouds so we can't see them. From there, we'll go up to our filters and go down to distortion. From there, we'll just select bump map. After that, we can go over to our inspector and click and drag our clouds into the bump map. So now you should start to have this melting effect. Go ahead and adjust the direction to a place you like. I like it right there at 130 degrees. Then set your amount to zero. Making sure your playhead is at the very beginning, we'll go ahead and click to add a keyframe under the amount slider. Then we can move forward a few frames. I tend to like how six frames looks and we'll go ahead and drag up the amount quite a bit. Let's push Command-8 to get the keyframe editor and select both keyframes. Right click and select Ease Both. So now this will have a nice ease animation. Go ahead and push Command-8 to hide your keyframe editor and now we can start to add in the particles. Clicking on this down arrow, go ahead and select the circle tool. Go ahead and create a circle anywhere you like and push shift so it's perfectly symmetrical. Now we'll go into our shape settings and disable the outline. So you should be left with this small white circle. I'm going to click and drag this circle out of the main group and create our own group which we'll rename to be the emitter group. With our circle selected, go on over to the left side and find your properties and find the position parameter. Click on the down arrow and push reset parameter so now that circle will be directly in the middle. From there we can go to the top right hand corner and find make particles. With that circle selected, go ahead and click on make particles. Now if we play through, you'll see that these particles are warping out from the center of our screen. What we want is these particles to actually come off of our logo. So with our emitter selected, go to the left side and find the shape settings. Change it from point over to image. Now we can click and drag the Final Cut Bro logo into that image source. So what that has done is now the particles are coming off of our image. But you're going to notice the arrangement is set to tile fill. Go ahead and change that over to random fill. Now what we can do is change our emission alpha cutoff slider here. Currently it's set to 50%. Go ahead and set that to a full 100%. If that's set to zero, we'll actually have particles that are appearing in the alpha channel and we definitely don't want that. Moving further down, you'll see this 3D option. Go ahead and enable that. I found that this makes things look way better because some of the particles are coming at the camera. Also, you can enable stuff like depth of field later on. So this adds a ton of variation to the effect and makes it look so much better. However, it does come at the cost of some performance. Moving further down, we can go ahead and find the option for birth rate. Go ahead and set that to zero. If we have that dragged up, particles are going to be continually emitting from our logo and we just want one big sudden burst. With that at zero, go ahead and find the initial number setting. Now this is by far the setting that is going to tank performance the most. So I highly suggest that you have a pretty low number to start with. Then when you're ready to export, you can go ahead and crank this number way up. So let's set this to 10,000 for right now. We don't want these particles to appear until the logo has actually warped. So let's go ahead and move forward until we find where the end of that warp animation is, somewhere in there. Then we can click and drag this emitter to that point. So now those particles will appear in the shape of our warped logo. Now moving further down, you'll see the life settings under our emitter. Currently, if we move forward about five seconds and a few frames, all of our particles will disappear. Now we definitely don't want all the particles to disappear at the same time. We want some variation. So I'm going to suggest you go forward about an extra second or so and then find the life randomness. Go ahead and increase that slider until you have just a few particles left on screen. Moving further down, go ahead and adjust the speed slider. I happen to like how this looks when it's really fast, so I'll drag that up quite a bit. Also under speed randomness, I highly suggest that you bring that 
all the way up. That means you're gonna have some really slow particles as well as some really fast particles. Again, making this effect look so much better. So now if we play through, we should have all of our particles appearing just like so. Continuing further down is a very, very important option and that is the color mode. This is how we can make these particles actually appear to look like our logo. Currently it's set to original. So right now it is taking on the original color of the circle we initially created. Go ahead and change it from original over to take image color. So now it is taking on the colors of the logo image. Right now our particles are just a little bit too large and it's giving us this pointerly look. Let's go ahead and change the scale of these particles to be considerably smaller. The smaller you make these particles, the more particles you're gonna need to fill out the space, but the better the image is going to look. So I'm gonna set the particles down to 20%. Then I'm going to actually increase the scale randomness. Now before we add in any more particles, I want to do some polish to the overall effect before we go to export this. So the first thing I want to do is selecting our emitter, we'll go up to behaviors, go down to particles and select scale over life. This enables us to actually shrink the particles over time. But by default, it's set to 0% to scale up to 100%. And we actually want the reverse effect. So go ahead and set the scale at birth to 100% and then set the scale and death down to zero. That means that these particles over time are going to slowly shrink into nothingness. Another thing I want is for these particles to actually be attracted to a certain object. Selecting our main group that has our logo, I'm going to create another circle and you can create this anywhere you like in your frame. I'm gonna do it in the upper right hand corner. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the outline and just call this the orbiter and we can actually disable the visibility. Selecting our emitter, go up to behaviors, go down to simulations and this time we're gonna select orbit around. Now we can drag in our orbiter effect and so as these particles particles are created, you'll see how they're actually flying up to that corner where we have the orbiter effect. If you don't like where the particles are going, we can just click and drag this anywhere on the screen to get a whole new look. Now with the orbit around effect selected, we can actually improve the strength. So the particles are actually flying a lot faster. Also, we could adjust the influence. So if we only want a few of the particles on the right side to be adjusted, we could drag down the influence. Now you could also duplicate this orbit around effect and create another orbiter. I'll go ahead and push command D and drag that to the other side. Now we could select that second orbit around effect and drag the orbiter copy. So now we have two orbiters, which is going to really add to this effect in a cool way. So now we have our simulation and particle set up. Let's go ahead and add in way more particles to really make this effect pop, as well as my secret ingredient to make this effect so much better. Selecting our emitter, go ahead and jump down to your initial number value and change this over to something like 50,000. The more particles you add, the better this effect is likely going to look. However, it does come at the cost of performance. Now I want our initial logo to actually disappear once all these particles come on. So selecting our original logo, go ahead and push O at the last frame. So now as the particles appear, our logo vanishes. And finally, it's time to add in the secret ingredient that really makes this effect look so much better. If we go on up to render, we can enable motion blur. And you'll see how cool this makes the particles look as they're flying around on the screen. So now that we have this all set up, it's time to export this so we can use it in our videos. Going up to the top right, select share and select export movie. Now we can call this whatever we like and jumping into our settings, you're gonna wanna decide if you want this effect to have an alpha channel or if it already has a background. If you want an alpha channel, you're gonna need to change the settings over to video and audio and the video codec as Apple ProRes 4444. Moving further down, you're gonna wanna change the color channels over to color plus alpha. Now if you export this, it's actually going to retain the alpha channel so you can drop this over the top of any of your videos. Now if you wanna keep a really small file size and you don't care about how having an alpha channel, I highly recommend you select computer, then change it over to H.264 better quality, and we can go ahead and set this back to color. Jumping over to the render settings, make sure that motion blur is enabled. You could also up your render quality if you so desire. We can push next and export our video. If you wanna see the progress of your export, you can click on this spinning icon here and this will give you a progress bar for how far along it is. Now that it's exported, go ahead and watch your masterpiece. Also, if you wanted to do a really great looking logo reveal, all you would need to do is reverse this effect in Final Cut Pro. So that is how you can create this really great looking particle explosion effect using 
Apple Motion. If you enjoyed this video, you might really like this video where I show you five free effects that are already built into Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.